Number five. Poor soil conditions, or in hydroponics, poor rock wool can be too wet for your plant to grow. That's typically what happens here with soil, uh, is it's gonna be too compacted and there's not enough area in the soil for proper aeration to happen, for air to move around the seed while it's germinating. So if that's the case, whether it be in soil or in a rock wool cube, um, if it's too wet, too saturated, and there's not enough room for air to move around the seed, uh, then it's not gonna germinate properly. So to negate this, what I like to do is always use a fresh rock wool cube if you are going to use rock wool at all for your hydroponic gardens or you can start in cocoa core. I love cocoa core because it's very fibrous and it allows a lot of room for water to flow out as well as air to flow around your seedlings. So that's my recommendation if you're going to start in a substrate at all you can just start in cocoa core and then transplant once it reaches its seedling stage. Number four is incorrect planting depth. What I see people do here is they'll either plant too deep and then the plant really just stands no chance and making it to the light when it starts at sugar leaves doesn't have the energy to make it all the way up there. Or people plant too shallow and then the plant's too weak because it never actually had to go through the struggle of growing through the soil before it grew its first set of leaves. So I don't know if this trick is foolproof for every different variety, but what I have always done is I just use the tip of my pinky. I know the tip of my pinky is just about an inch, it's just shy of an inch, and I have a pretty long pinky, so there's a good chance that your pinky is somewhere between three quarters of an inch and one inch before that first line there. So I'll put that straight into the soil, right to where the line of my pinky starts, and that's usually about three quarters of an inch to an inch deep, and that's the perfect depth for planting. So if you're using a rock wool cube, you can use something like a marker to just kind of gauge out the hole to make sure it's deep enough, then plant your seed in, and then I'll use cocoa core or perlite or vermiculite, any good hydroponic substrate to cover that rock wool so that the plant does have to grow up and through something uh, without the light so that it gets a nice strong stem. This video is part of a series that I'm doing all about the germination stage. This is the first part of the germination stage, just starting your seed, uh, and I put together a whole guide on humble growth hydroponics. Make sure you check that out because it's going to be the seed starting master guide. It's totally free. Uh, it's just a PDF guide that goes over all of this, and there's a bit more detailed information in that that I didn't want to have to really suss out in the whole video. I was afraid I'd lose people. So make sure you download that guide and let's move on to number three, poor seed quality. You know, over time, seeds can be like damaged by pests, seeds are susceptible to like parasites and disease. Things can happen that make seeds uh, more vulnerable over time and more likely to just not sprout. So a great way that you can determine whether or not your seeds are going to sprout if you have some really old ones is just do the paper towel method. This is where you take a, a paper towel and soak it in water and then lay your seeds out on the paper towel and fold them up within it and then tuck it somewhere warm and dark for about two to three days. Then you can go back and see which seeds have started to sprout and which haven't and at this point it's a pretty good indicator of whether the seeds are going to start at all or not. Another thing you can do for your seeds to ensure that they have a better chance of success is soak them for about 18 hours before you germinate them. Put them in just a glass of water and let them set in there for 18 hours. And that will trigger the germination, that will tell the plant that it's plenty wet enough and it's a stable enough environment for them to go ahead and germinate in. And that brings me to number two, humidity. So the air temperature around the plant has to be adequate in order for the plant to grow. If it's too wet, if it's too humid, the seed won't start, and if it's too dry, the seed won't start. The perfect humidity for starting your seeds is actually about 60 to 70 percent humidity. And the way that I've always achieved this is just to get a germination station, which is something that looks like this, with a humidity dome that you can adjust and regulate the amount of humidity inside of it. And then you can pick up one of these for inexpensive. I'll link it up in the description on Amazon. And this will just measure the humidity and the temperature inside there for you to make sure that everything's set just right. Humidity is really crucial, uh, especially once your plant makes it up through the soil. When the transpiration cycle begins is when humidity is really, really important. And that's after you've grown your first set of leaves. So just be very aware of that. That's something we're going to be covering in the next video, which is all about once you get your seed started and it's germinating. And that brings me to number one. The number one reason why people's seeds don't sprout might be a surprise to you, but it is actually temperature. So seeds really love a warmer temperature to sprout. That's odd considering the ground is actually usually much cooler than the air around it. 
So a warmer temperature for seed starting seems like it goes against nature, but a nice warm temperature tells that germ inside the seed to get going and to start breaking the shell, uh, accompanied with the proper moisture, accompanied with the darkness, the right depth of planting, and the proper humidity. If all those things are in alignment, then warmth will tell the plant that it needs to send its roots down and start shooting up to get some light. And I have found that the perfect temperature for germinating seeds is right at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And the way that you can achieve this is with a simple, inexpensive heat mat, which I'll also link up in the description box. That is something you can put under your germination station that will heat up the water and heat up the seeds so that they germinate quickly and efficiently. So by putting all five of these things together, you're pretty much guaranteed for success. So let's run through a checklist. If you make sure you're hitting 80 degrees temperature with 70% humidity, we're either soaking our seeds or we're using the paper towel method to kind of get rid of any seeds that aren't gonna be good anymore. And then we're using our pinky or we're gonna use a marker to make sure we gauge out a hole that's deep enough, but not too deep for our plants. And we're gonna make sure we're either using a fresh soil mix or what I prefer is cocoa core for starting your seeds. And lastly, if you're in a hydroponic garden and you're using rock wool, just make sure that the rock wool doesn't get too wet. Make sure you check out that guide and all the other free guides over at homegrowthhydroponics.com. They're gonna be a really great resource for you moving forward. Also keep an eye out for tomorrow's video on germination. Make sure you're subscribed for that and let's grow together.